name the correct spelling of each even though it's pretty simple and your official title do I have a title that's a good question what's it like working with a volunteer like Mike Hurd oh Mike Hurd as a volunteer makes me feel like a slacker as an employee I think the title I liked best of all the ones that I've been given is one that our former executive director Paul McFarland bestowed upon me he decided I was the project manager for the Cone Peak Trails Network project The genesis of the project was in our volunteer projects in the 2003 to 2007 time frame. Since I'm not alone, I'm not going to carry it all. Uh, I don't have a drop of water with me, so I'm going to fill up when I get yeah, to the spring. I need to do the same. Okay, fine, so we'll plan on that. Mike had a special affinity for the trails around Cone Peak, as many of us do. It's a really incredibly beautiful area, a really special place. Um, so special that there's actually a research natural area. Yeah, but then other groups, every other group had like at least one pair of lobbyists. You know, people that go out that haven't been trained shouldn't be allowed to have their tools with them. Cone Peak is just a short ways north of us and it's important because it's the steepest gradient. There's a research natural area on its face called the Cone Peak RNA, the Cone Peak Gradient Research Natural Area, and it's the steepest piece of land from summit to sea in the continental United States. If you look at the relief of this area, it is astoundingly complex. You're looking at elevations that range from a couple hundred feet above the level of the sea across the street of Kirk Creek campground, a popular car campground, all the way up to almost a mile in elevation. What Mike came to was a network of trails that had been uh, repeatedly uh, burned over and damaged by uh, post-fire regeneration, falling trees, this kind of thing. I don't think I want to fill this bugger up. Yeah, it gets heavy. We have a pretty extreme fire cycle here on the Central Coast. Some of these are landscape level fires, 200,000 acres plus. You get a big fire about once a decade, and when something like that burns, you'll get patches that are burned with really extreme intensity. Sometimes you can have all the covered vegetation pretty much wiped out, and then what grows back, uh, we like to say it's kind of like a chia pet. What grows back is impenetrable within a couple of years. The immediate aftermath of the fire on the trails was to cause large amounts of material that goes by the name of dry ravel to uh, fill up uh, practically every place where there was a gully. The vegetation burns away, stuff rolls down the hill, and it lands on the flat place, which is your trail. Where is the most convenient place to cut it and get the smallest possible piece? Right? You agree with that? Because we'll want to roll this piece, yeah, you want that, that's a big, big ass piece of wood there. It is. We'll cut it at an angle like this, and that piece can then just pop out. 
That means that the finishing person has to be up there. Actually, I'm going to change something around again. Stop. Yep. Let's pull it out. I'm going to have you do the other side because that will naturally tend to make this side cut down further. Uh, okay, there we go. Is that still good for you? Yeah. Okay. Basically what Mike Heard did was begin organizing volunteer trail crews. Volunteers can only do so much. I mean, bless our volunteers, we really appreciate them, but most volunteers have you know, a weekend here and there free. They need to spend that time to hike from their car to the base camp and then work on what we found, you know, maybe the first three to five miles of trail from any given trailhead. Some of these locations that need to work were further than that. And so he did a really great job in tracking down American Conservation Experience, ACE, which is a group based in Flagstaff, Arizona with a field office in Santa Cruz. Out of the box, ACE was excellent. They are a professional conservation corps. And Mike coordinated the workloads so that uh, volunteers could do as much as they could close to the trailheads. ACE could work on the more distant routes, on more extensive hitches and he worked with the Forest Service to get pack stock support to get uh, gear and equipment in and food in for ACE and for some volunteer crews. And despite lots of false starts and lots of setbacks, Mike stuck it out and even had the wherewithal to put together a NEPA project. And this is the National Environmental Policy Act, one of our most important pieces of environmental legislation. Um, what's the extent where you're going to get your knuckles wrapped? Uh, not really even close yet. Okay. We're going to need to use full strokes on this when we get going, because it's a big cut. The Wilderness Act uh, says for eight of the ten prohibited uses, and, and that includes uh, mechanized transport, motorized equipment, or even temporary roads, that they are not to be used except for the minimum necessary to administer the area for the purposes of this act. This complex here was far too dangerous and technically difficult, if not impossible, to do with cross-cut saws. We had large redwoods stacked close to each other and uh, it would have taken, in some cases, a saw over 10 feet long, well, perched on a hill where you couldn't get two people to do it. There was a section of the Stone Ridge Trail that was basically lost. Folks had been using a false route that had about a 55% grade, something you don't want to walk down with a pack. And Mike saw this and pretty much engineered a reroute that would involve a switchback and make it much more reasonable for any normal person to hike. Mike and I put our heads together and uh, we did a do-it-yourself NEPA document and he um, actually shepherded that through to completion and put in a reroute, and that trail is a much nicer hike now. This is a, a letter from Chief Tom Tidwell to Mike Hurd. Uh, congratulations, you have been selected as the Forest Service 2013 Individual Volunteer of the Year. You have been a value, valuable asset to the Monterey Ranger District by providing extensive on the ground trail work in the Cone Peak area of the Ventana Wilderness over the past two years you have volunteered nearly 3,700 hours. You know, I'm kind of thinking that most people volunteer, it's kind of like not a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> These are full-time job statistics, so uh, wow. Uh, 3,700 hours, and we're instrumental in helping the Ranger District to finalize the National Environmental Policy Act process for a critical trail reroute project. my wedge but that's all right that's I needed to move faster than I did I didn't move at all <laughs>
<laughs> what we've been doing since then is chipping away at maintenance issues and trying to figure out how we uh, can uh, fund that in the future. And in my case, I kind of like to find a, another project manager to take over because I'm getting old and tired. And also, I've been working as a volunteer and uh, wouldn't trade it for anything, but my uh, funds are running low. And like most human beings, I'm accustomed to eating. So I'm going to have to go back to work and do something else, I'm afraid. <laughs>